So good afternoon. Here we are again for another lovely session of ENGR 2302 Engineering Dynamics. Uh, today we are going to work on a new topic uh, for, um, for our lectures, or for our lecture. And this is going to be finishing up chapter 15 of the Beer Vector Mechanics book. And today we're going to be looking at rotating frames of reference. So rotating frames of reference. Let's consider um, objects, rigid bodies, moving in a rotating frame of reference. All right, so let us consider this here. Um, so let us first look at rate of change in a rotating frame of reference. Uh, rate of change with respect to a rotating frame of reference uh, with respect to a rotating frame. Rotating reference frames can be useful for analyzing many types of problems. Uh, systems that are obviously rotating, engines, uh, pumps, uh, any kind of system that you want to analyze the internal forces when it is rotating. Uh, for a system that is rotating. All right, so uh, let's see here. Now I'm going to draw two frames, and let's say, let me draw this out here. I'm going to have a fixed frame of reference O, X, Y, Z. So consider two frames of reference, uh, O, X, Y, and Z. So O, X, Y, Z is fixed, not moving, um, not rotating. And then I'm going to have an alternate frame of reference. Um, and let me use, uh, let's say, I'll, in this case, I'll use a lowercase x, y, z. Well, that's going to be a little bit difficult to portray out here. Let me make this capital then. Uh, so then I'll have a secondary, uh, let's call that X, uh, Y, and Z. Y and Z. And um, this is going to rotate about OA with this is some, so I have some uh, reference vector A some reference vector A, and this thing is going to have angular um, velocity omega. Angular velocity omega. So O, X, Y, Z is fixed, and a frame, a frame, let me, maybe I'll just write these, and when, when referring to it, I'll write this in red for um, hints. Uh, so frame, O, X, Y, Z uh, rotates about fixed axis, about fixed axis, um, let me just do this here, about, if I can write properly, about fixed axis uh, OA with angular velocity omega. OA with angular velocity omega. All right, and uh, this thing will have velocity, uh, then we'll have Q, uh, then we'll have a certain angular velocity with respect to the rotating reference frame, and that will be Q. So Q here, Q, uh, Q is going to be the uh, the velocity, angular velocity, with respect to the rotating reference frame. Q is angular velocity with respect to rotating reference frame. Okay, I can't write there. Q is the angular velocity 
with respect to this rotating reference frame. <clears throat> so we're being very general at first. So I have a frame, uh, I have my global uh, fixed XYZ, capital X, capital Y, capital Z. I have a rotating reference frame that is rotating about uh, vector A, and then I have some other vector, um, some other vector that is, uh, that I'm looking at, this, some general angular velocity with respect to uh, the rotating reference frame. Okay, so let us look at this. Let's work through this mathematics. With respect to the rotating frame, <clears throat> uh, the rotating frame, let me do this in red, O, X, Y, Z, the rotating one. Well, the Q vector, we can break this into components, is going to be qxi uh, plus qyj plus qzk plus qzk or um, I could also say the uh, dot the um, q dot of here uh, here let's see Q, oh, that's a theta. Uh, Q dot x, y, z is equal to Q x dot uh, i plus Q y dot j plus Q z dot k. Vector, vector. Oh, actually, sorry, no vector there. Those are just scalar components if I break this down to components. Okay, and then with respect to the uh, fixed reference frame, the fixed reference frame, uh, O, X, Y, Z, O, X, Y, Z, my uh, Q dot Uh, X, O, X, Y, Z, I should say, would be equal to Q, X dot I plus Q, Y dot J plus Q, Z dot K uh, plus here. Uh, what else would I want to say? Uh, Let's see, uh, QX, uh, QX I dot plus QY J dot, um, J dot, let me do this more like this maybe, J dot plus QZ K dot. All right. And this is the rate of change with respect to the rotating reference frame. Uh, with respect to rotating reference frame. Uh, I'm sorry, that's sorry. That, that's, that is with respect to the uh, fixed reference frame. Now, now let's look at it with respect to the rotating. The uh, Q dot X I again uh, plus Q dot Y J plus Q dot Y J plus Q dot Z K. This is equal to uh, Q dot in the X, Y, Z, the O, X, Y, Z. Uh, this is the rate of change with respect to the rotating reference frame. There you have that. And actually, this one should probably be in red here to be consistent. Uh, 
uh, the q dot uh, o x y z. Like shown. Now, uh, some other notes um, here. Uh, if Q were fixed within O X Y Z, so we have so Q is free to move, but if Q were fixed uh, within O X Y Z, oh sorry. This here should actually say Q is just a um, a displace. Uh, this is actually I should say this is just a, dis uh, a displacement vector. I should say this angular velocity. This should be more of a displacement vector. Sorry. Q is a displacement vector. Just a position in space. Uh, if Q were fixed within um, O X Y Z. Uh, then, and again, I'm trying to use red whenever I'm referring to the rotating reference frame to try to be consistent within O, X, Y, Z. Then um, Q dot O, X, Y, Z, again, this one referring to the global reference frame, the stationary reference frame, uh, is equivalent Uh, to velocity of a point, a point in a rigid body attached to OXYZ. Uh, to OXYZ, wow. To OXYZ, the rotating reference frame. O, X, Y, Z. And then uh, Q, X, I dot uh, plus I dot plus Q, Y, Q, Y, J dot plus Q, Z, K dot <coughs> would be equal to omega crossed in to Q. And then with respect to the OXYZ frame, uh, to, the, uh, to the fixed OXYZ frame, well, Q dot OXYZ Uh, o x y z is equal to here the q dot in the rotating reference frame o x y z uh, plus the dot product of um, omega and q. The dot, or sorry, the cross product of omega and q here. I know that's a lot. I know that's very symbolic. I know that's very theoretical, but we will get to some um, more um, simplistic or more um, practical applied examples. All right. And continuing on here. Uh, so we're going to look at the, we're going to work through some of the equations of general three-dimensional motion, and then we'll be looking at the uh, we're looking at plane motion um, as uh, a bit more now. So let us consider plane motion in a rotating reference frame. This is the kind of thing that we're actually usually more interested in. Plane motion, as in motion that is restricted to two dimensions. in a rotating reference frame. So we're going to have merely the x and the y axis 
And then we'll have capital X, capital Y axis. And they'll have a rotating reference frame that'll ha call lowercase x and lowercase y. Lowercase x and lowercase y. And then uh, let's say that there that this frame, this frame uh, lowercase x lowercase y, has some uh, angular velocity omega. And I'm going to consider the um, <coughs> how a single position vector will fare under both axes, or under both systems. So say we have vector r and particle p. Vector r and particle p. So again, here, a frame oxy is fixed and frame lowercase xy, O lowercase xy is, is uh, free to rotate, or is rotating. O xy is rotating. Is rotating about the origin uh, with angular velocity omega. With angular velocity omega, now, uh, let's consider here. So the position vector uh, will be the same regardless of, ve of the um, regardless of the axis. Position vector uh, RP um, for particle P. The same in both frames of reference. But the rate of change is dependent on the chosen frame. Is dependent on the chosen frame. What do I mean by this? Well, let's think about this. So this OX, or so this OXY, this uh, the rotating reference frame is spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning, and well, at a given point, the coordinates may not be exactly equal, numerically equal to this one and this one, or between the moving and the stationary. However, they're both going to still describe the same point. In other words, if I am, uh, if I'm standing on a merry-go-round or something and it's spinning around, and I and you're standing off to the side or something. And I ask you, you know, I, I, I so, um, oh, sorry. Um, say I am standing on a merry-go-round. Um, I'm on this merry-go-round that's going around. And you're standing over here. And then there's a tree over here. Well, I'm going around and around and around. Now, if we ask uh, where, if, if I ask each, if someone asks each of us where that tree is, we'll both at any given time say the same location. It's over there. It's clearly over there. Um, however, if we ask, uh, if someone asks us how fast is that tree moving, well, um, that's a very weird sentence. How fast is that tree moving? Um, how fast is that tree moving? Uh, you will get different results depending on who you ask. Um, so, if you're just standing here and, and the, uh, on the ground, the tree is also on the ground, you'll say the tree has zero velocity. However, I'm on this rotating disk, and I'll say, oh, the tree has positive velocity. Oh, here it has negative velocity. Oh, it's positive again. Oh, it's negative again. Positive, negative, positive, negative. I will go back and forth um, with as I rotate around, uh, saying whether this tree is moving away from me or towards me. Uh, so, again... The position will not depend on who we ask, but the velocity will. And this is no different than any kind of moving reference frame that we've already seen. If you are, um, again, if you are, a uh, classic example of this with linear reference frames would be the idea of, non-rotating reference frames, would be the idea of, so again, relative velocity, if you remember from earlier, 
with linear reference frames, how fast things are moving will depend on who you ask. In other words, uh, there's a very famous, uh, one of my favorite little myth thing that's, uh, one of my favorite things they ever did in Mythbusters was they put, and I cannot draw a truck to save my life. I'll tell you that right now. Truck. That looks like a pickup truck, right? Sure. Um, what they did was they put a, a baseball pitching machine in the back of a truck. Okay. And baseball pitching machines, you can tune them usually to, well, or they either you can tune them or they just fire at a certain velocity. And what they did was they, uh, f they timed this just right so that the forward velocity of the truck matched the, ba the, the velocity that the uh, baseball would fly out the back at. And uh, so uh, both of the, so there was somebody standing in the bed of the truck firing the baseballs and there's somebody standing with their camera over here, right, uh, on the ground. And from the point of view of the person on the ground, the baseball just fell like a rock straight downward. So it comes flying out of the um, it comes flying out of the pitching machine and it just drops like a stone. How does that work? Hmm. How do you make a baseball, or how can you explain that a you know a pitching machine these things can fire um, you know a baseball at like a, you know sixty miles an hour or so? How can it just drop straight downward after falling out of that uh, machine? How is that possible? Ex uh, not forward force, but forward velocity. So if you ask the person in the in the cab of the truck or in the bed of the truck, they will say that the, they saw the ba baseball go flying outwards. Ba or they will say they saw the baseball flying this way at 60 miles an hour away from them, and they are correct. In their reference frame, the baseball went flying 60 miles per hour away from the person who's in the bed of the truck. But however, the person standing to the side over here is saying, "Oh well, the, the at the beginning." the pitching machine was already moving 60 miles per hour to the right. And so if it fires the baseball 60 miles per hour to the left, according to a person in a stationary reference frame or stationary with respect to the Earth's surface, uh, the baseball now has zero velocity, and it just falls directly downward like a stone. Um, I would encourage you to look that up on YouTube if you can. I'm sure you can find it on uh, somewhere on YouTube, maybe on Discovery's website, whatever. Um, just look up... Uh, a Mythbusters baseball pitching machine or something like that. It's, it's, it's really cool. It's a really cool demonstration of relative velocity. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same idea with a rotating reference frame, but um, maybe a bit more complex because things are rotating. Okay, so then moving on. Uh, however, the absolute, so continuing from previously, uh, the absolute velocity of particle P, if I look at the absolute velocity of particle P, Now, of course, I should give the caveat that all of these sort of relative frames of reference, rotating frames of reference, everything else, uh, all of this, of course, is, as we were doing throughout the course, using standard Newtonian um, uh, mathematics, standard Newtonian uh, dynamics. In other words, uh, if something is moving to the right at uh, 50 miles an hour, if I'm in a train traveling 50 miles an hour and I throw a baseball the same direction, from the point of view of someone on the ground, uh, if, I, if I throw the baseball at 20 miles an hour, someone on the ground will say that the, that the baseball is traveling at 70 miles per hour. I can simply add up the velocities. However, um, actually, you know what? I'll have some fun and, and, and mention this. However, uh, that only works for, well, it works for almost any kind of velocity that you ever realistically encounter. However, though, uh, if you study some special relativity, you will know that if you are in a spaceship traveling, say, 0 0.8 c, uh, 0 0.8 c forward, this direction, and then you fire a torpedo from your spaceship at relative to you that is traveling, relative to me, this thing is traveling now, my torpe little torpedo here is traveling at 0 0.3 c, what's the problem with that? Uh, C meaning the speed of light, a uh, fraction of the speed of light. Uh, so 0.8 C would be zero would be 80% uh, the speed of light. So 
if I have a spaceship that's flying through space at 80% the speed of light, and it fires a torpedo forward with a velocity relative to it of 30% the speed of light, the problem with that is at first you would think from, a, from an observer in a stationary reference frame that they would see the torpedo traveling at 110% the speed of light. Is that possible? It's not. You probably heard this before that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. Um, and the idea is, now at first that may seem contradictory, this is the obvious, um, this is the obvious sort of paradox that why can't you just fire something, if you're already close to the speed of light, why can't you just fire something a little bit faster and have something going faster than the speed of light, right? Well, the thing is when velocities get very high, they don't add linearly. You have to apply a mathematical formula. It's a power relationship and it's one of those square root, um, some of the squares type things. And you can read up through that uh, on that if you wish, but uh, they do not add, they do not simply add. Um, so that is actually how velocities work in the real world. Uh, that's actually how velocities always work. A velocity is never add linearly, but uh, at any kind of normal velocity that you're going to be dealing with in any kind of realistic system, the velocities are so low relative to the speed of light, you can just add them together. The, the, all of the Newtonian mechanics that you learn through school is sort of an approximation of the Einsteinian or the, the relativistic um, mechanics. So let's not worry about such things. In this course, Newton is correct forever. That example right, reminded me of that episode of Futurama where they shoot up Bender. Oh, yes, the episode of Futurama where they shoot up Bender. Yes, I, I'm very fond of that. Or, well, that is the, uh, the, the Godfellas, if I believe. Yes, yes. Uh, um, first I was God, then I met God. Yes, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, uh, anyway, okay, so yes, uh, absolute velocity of particle P uh, is going to be VP is equal to R dot, um, R dot in the OXY, or the OX, uh, I should just say the OXY frame, like that OX capital, so these are the global, the stationary, O, capital O, capital X, capital Y. And this is going to be equal to omega, uh, omega cross R plus R dot um, in the, actually let me do this in red to show I'm using the rotating one, plus R dot in the O, X, Y, Z frame in the OXYZ frame. And then, let's say we imagine we looked at a rigid slab or rigid slice in this frame. Um, so let me, I'll do that, maybe I'll do that on the next slide. Consider a rigid body in this rotating uh, plane. A rigid body or slab rotating in this frame. Well, uh, let me draw out a few things. Uh, here, mm, I'm going to define two quantities. Okay, so let us look at this here. Um, just a second. Okay. So I'm going to say um, in this frame, or I'm just going to call this um, maybe, um, I'm trying to figure out what I want to call this, I don't like the symbol in these notes, um, maybe I'll just say um, F, curl F, fancy F, okay, uh, for the slab that is rotating um, here. Uh, then I'm going to say let P, let P prime be a point on the slab, uh, on the slab which corresponds instantaneously to the position of particle P, uh, corresponds instantaneously or at an instant to the position of particle P. particle P. Okay, 
So let me kind of uh, illustrate this. Well, I'm going to have the velocity of um, here, of P with respect to F, curl a fancy F, or the slab. That's just that's the abbreviation for my rotating slab. Uh, is going to be equal to uh, R dot in the XY frame. R dot in the OXY frame which is equal to the velocity of p along the slab, along its path. Equals the velocity of p and along its path on the slab of p along its path on the slab on the slab and the absolute velocity um, velocity of the particle p, a particle p uh, would be vp is equal to uh, here. Uh, actually, let's say. Actually, just a second here. Sorry about that. Don't want that. Got a little sidetrack. Sorry about that. Um, this is going to be. The velocity of p prime is going to be the absolute velocity of particle p prime on the slab. A particle, and I will draw this out after this. A p prime on the slab. And then I can write the absolute velocity can be uh, as in another form. can be written as well vp is equal to vp prime plus v of p with respect to fancy f or the slab itself and then drawing this out uh, here I again have my x and y fixed axes so drawing out what I've labeled before, or described before, and then I have my potato, or my slab. It's a dark maroon potato. And this is going to have angular velocity omega. Angular velocity omega. And it's going, then we're going to have, we're going to have a, um, a rotating reference frame which is the way this, which, which with this slab is rotating, if I can manage to talk properly, is going to be x, y, x and y. And then there will be some particle p here. There will be some particle p, some particle p, and then it will have vector r from the origin at, a, at an instant. Vector r from the origin. And it will have um, sort of two velocities here. Well, um, at that point, first I'm going to have, we have a few velocities interplaying. This is going to be p prime. All right, um, here. And again, p prime is the position on the slab at one instant. At one instant. And then the velocities I will have here my, um, my vp prime which again is the absolute velocity of point P on the slab, or point P prime. So this would be uh, VP prime. VP prime here, that looks really bad. That's VP prime, where VP prime is the absolute velocity of point P prime on slab. 
And then also I had the other velo this other velocity that I mentioned, uh, v of p with, with respect to f. v of p with respect to fancy f. Or curl f. And again, that is the velocity of um, p along its path on the slab. Along its path on the slab. Mm. Uh, p along its path on the slab. Okay. All right, questions on that. I know this is fairly long form theory, but um, I do feel like I need to cover it. Okay. So we can continue working through this. And then if I, I want to look at the, at the uh, absolute and angular accelerations. So let us look next at the absolute acceleration um, of the particle P on this rotating slab. of the particle P. Well, um, the acceleration vector of P is going to be equal to omega dot, uh, omega dot cross R plus omega uh, cross R, um, R dot, uh, R dot of OXY, um, of OXY capital OXY, oxy, um, I'm sorry, not uh, omega cross R dot of OXY, of OXY, plus the derivative with respect to time, DDT of R dot uh, OXY, you let me label this in red because I'm talking about the rotating frame. Uh, plus a DDT of R dot uh, OXY. There you have that. Actually, probably the parentheses should go like that. R dot OXY. However, then um, I can transform this to say, I can use my, um, my relationship I developed previously, um, but, but R dot um, OXY capital, OXY is equal to, uh, I know uh, omega dot R, or sorry, omega cross R, omega cross R plus R dot uh, OXY. Let me do that in red again. Plus, um, cross R plus um, R dot OXY. And so then I can plug this in and say DDT of um, th this here, of the same uh, R, uh, R dot OXY, of R dot OXY, OXY, lowercase, the rotating frame. is then equal to uh, here, actually I'll just do the rest of this in red because it's all referring to the rotating, R double dot uh, OXY plus omega uh, cross R dot, R single dot OXY. <coughs> 
LXY. Okay? And then I can find the, the acceleration of P here, or I can break this down a bit further and say, okay, well, acceleration P vector, a P vector, is equal to omega dot cross R uh, plus omega cross omega cross omega cross R uh, omega uh, cross R to two omegas uh, plus two omega Uh, cross r dot uh, oxy. Let me do that in red. Uh, cross r dot um, oxy uh, plus uh, r double dot uh, r double dot oxy, like so. Then I can look at P prime, that's conceptual point on the slab. Then considering point P prime, uh, using point P prime on the slab, uh, point P prime, I can say that AP prime, the acceleration of P prime is equal to uh, Q dot cross R uh, plus omega uh, cross omega cross R uh, omega cross R and then the acceleration of P with respect to F with respect to the slab here is equal to R double dot uh, o, X, Y. Actually, let me do that all in red to refer to the moving, the rotating reference frame. Uh, R double dot O, X, Y. And then the absolute velocity of the particle becomes, or the, sorry, the absolute acceleration becomes, the absolute acceleration becomes Well, it will collapse to AP equals omega, um, oops, sorry, not quite that yet. AP equals AP prime uh, plus A of P with respect to F, um, with respect to the slab, with respect to F plus two omega uh, cross uh, r dot r dot o x y across um, r dot o x y in the rotating reference frame, and then this is going to be equal to uh, a p uh, prime the acceleration of P prime plus the acceleration of P with respect to F uh, plus AC, the centripetal acceleration, or I should say the Coriolis acceleration. So AC is going to be the um, equal to two, uh, two times the uh, omega crossed Two cro uh, times omega. Two times omega cross r dot o x y. Uh, dot or crossed into r dot um, o x y. And this will be equal to. This is equal to two omega. Cross. V of P with respect to F. 
and this is equal to the Coriolis acceleration. And this is this term, this AC, is what we refer to as the Coriolis acceleration. So in other words, let's uh, summarize it here, the Coriolis acceleration. Uh, the Coriolis acceleration. Just want to rewrite this here, a little more space. Is going to be AC equals two omega dot or two just uh, two omega crossed in to the velocity of v or sorry p with respect to the slab f, and that is our Coriolis acceleration. All right. Okay, I think now might be a good time to take a short break. Um, I have a little bit more theory I want to work with, then we'll start looking at some um, problems of uh, some examples of this, of working with rotating reference frames. All right, that'll do it, and thank you.